here, Donna Woods with Photonic Health, and this version of Health Made Simple is with KC LaPierre of the Institute of Applied Equine Podiatry. KC is the co-founder, and he is an absolutely brilliant man, especially oh, when it comes to equine yeah. feet. And we met him and his wife, oh gosh, 2009, 2009? Um, at Pat Pirelli's Ranch. Yeah. And uh, really became quite fascinated with their work because the way that they look at um, the equine hoof is completely different than any modality out there. And as a result, Brian went through the program mm -hmm. and he's now an advanced diploma applied equine podiatrist. There you go. Yay. So welcome, Casey. <laughs> good, good. And thanks for having me on. I, I appreciate that. Hey, no problem. Um, so equine feet trimming is a giant topic, and we could is. talk uh, for years <laughs> on it. Uh, and um, But what I want to do is I really want to, like, give people a basic introduction to mm -hmm. what you guys do and your practitioners do um, and why it's so different and how it impacts the horse. Okay. So if you want to give sort of a... Yeah, um, you know, when... Uh, well, my first book we wrote back in 2004, we actually put a definition for what we do, okay? And that's it's a pretty simple definition <laughs> that uh, kind of describes the, um, what it is that's different about what we, how we approach hoof care. And basically the definition is, is pretty simple. Uh, it's the essence of applied equine podiatry is actually the conscientious study of the equine foot, always striving to expose it to the proper environmental stimuli. So we're talking about what we're doing in the environment uh, the horse owner is going to do. Uh, it's always accepting the fact that the horse has the innate ability to heal itself, but the environment that we have our horses in, domestication, has actually broken that golden rule of do no harm. And, uh, you know, looking at it from a holistic perspective, um, uh, you, know, you know, I was a farrier for many years, yep. um, you know, um, going back to, I started as a farrier, professional farrier back in the early 80s. On the racetracks in New York, right? Yeah, on the, for, for standard breads. I used to do a lot of standard breads, the trotters and pacers. And I would look at the hoof and I was seeing changes in the hoof. And I assumed that it was because of the horse, you know, because how I was shoeing the horse that I was getting these changes that were not desirable. So I started to look at ways to learn how to shoe the horse better. Okay. But that was, that's where the turning point came. I quickly became, um, I started to understand that it wasn't really the hoof that I was looking at. I was actually looking at the foot of the horse because inside that hoof is actually a foot. Okay, and the hoof is actually, you could consider it basically the horseshoe or the horse already has a horseshoe. I mean, the hoof is the horseshoe for that horse's foot. And um, what I found was that shoeing the horse with a rigid horseshoe did not suffice for treatment of the horse's foot. You know, um, uh, so that's why originally uh, back in 1999 and 2000, uh, actually our company slogan was shoeless not clueless correct okay that's yes. originally where we came from because um i'm uh i don't uh, i don't agree with the way horses are being shod today i don't agree with shoeing period so how we look at it is we look at it um how can we develop the healthiest foot on our horse Okay, and it's not about barefoot, it's not about shoeing, it's about understanding what's required in our environment of domestication to actually get a good healthy foot under the horse. Correct. That's basically what right. applied equine dietary is. Right, that's awesome, that's okay. awesome. It's a big mission, and, yeah, it's... And, and, is, and I know you guys have been doing it for a very yeah. long time, yeah. and uh, you've barely scratched the surface. And I know yeah. that because, you know, Brian is, turning away clients yeah, absolutely. All, um, all the time because yeah. he just he just doesn't have you know i sort of need him here at photonic yeah yeah and you, <laughs> um, yeah that's a that's a big problem uh, yes so one of the things is um that because 
I took your just one of your courses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, I learned a lot like a lot that there's way more to just like trimming the horse's hoof which is sort of like trimming our fingernail yeah. Yeah. like the function <laughs> of the foot on the inside is so critical mm -hmm. To understand, like as, even as a horse owner, yeah. to understand what's going on so that, you know, if your horse comes up out of the pasture and he's got chipped things, you know, fingers or chipped hoofs, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people go, oh my God, his feet are in such bad shape. And that's really not necessarily, no, not necessarily. accurate. Yeah. And so that... Um, the way that you have your company has developed your education program is really amazing to be able to like mm. open up look at the foot dissect like if you come to a live class and yeah. i believe even on your online programs dissections mm -hmm. dissections mm -hmm. to be able to see that and go oh my gosh you know the frog is stretched because of x y and z mm -hmm. it's not just because and oh well there's nothing we can do about it yeah yeah um, and, and that's you know a lot of a lot of what's happened over the last hundred years or longer is that we've been complacent and we've actually accepted things that are abnormal as normal correct. you know things like simple thrush you yeah. know the deep central sulcus okay i'm gonna pick this up yep, absolutely. okay so we're it talking about up. the deep central sulcus is the groove we see here in the frog you know that's been accepted as a norm and it's no more normal than um uh, you know any other type of infection uh so those are the kind of things that horse owners have to be aware of they they have to understand that when we talk about i seldom use the term hoof yeah. Okay, but when I'm when I'm teaching, I very seldom use the term hoof, because the hoof uh, is viewed as, as I said, almost like the horseshoe for the horse it already has. So I, I talk about the foot of the horse, and what people have to understand is that conventional farrier practice today, they are practicing looking at this hoof, and they're relating it to the bones inside the hoof. Right. Okay, so that's where a lot of this comes from when it comes to balance, when it comes to, you know, trimming the hoof, and they're looking at bone. But when you understand the hoof of the horse, you realize that a very small percentage of that hoof actually has a foundation of bone. Right. Okay, and when you, when you look at this, I'm pick it up again because you can see that's the coffin bone. Right. Uh, there, there are three bones in here, but if you look at this, this is the bone, the coffin bone, and it is actually about less than half of the internal foot right. that is responsible for the growing of this hoof. We have all cartilage and we have soft tissue, and that's what we have to concentrate on. And that's that's the kind of thing that, as horse owners, <laughs> I'm gonna mess this up. Um, as horse owners, you have to have an understanding that we're not dealing with a hoof that um, it's a living structure. I mean, we know right. between circulation and soft tissue and cartilage that make up the majority of that foot. Um, you know how we treat these normal conditions changes. Absolutely. Okay, we're looking at them from a more holistic perspective. We're looking at it saying, okay, why does my horse have reoccurring thrush? Why are the why are the hoofs always cracking? Why do we have thin soles? You know, first you have to learn how to identify these problems. Absolutely. And that's what most people, you know, they look at a hoof, and if they look at the hoof wall and look at the outside and say, well, there's no crack, so that's a healthy hoof. Well, that's not the case. True. Uh, so those are the kind of things that people have to be educated on. They have to be educated educated on what actually constitutes health in my horse's foot right you know that's that's what we that's our that's our mission <laughs> that's our goal <laughs> for you know 2023 right. is actually to you know educate as many people as we can to recognize what is unhealthy and what practices are being done today that are actually detrimental to the horse correct 
Correct. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's quite interesting because Brian gets called out, and I'm sure you do too, mm -hmm. on the worst case scenario, yep. right? Yep. You know, like they've been through the yep. list, and yep. you're like the Absolutely. last resort. I mean, it's yeah. pretty common with most of your all, probably all your practitioners as well. Mm -hmm. And yep. it's quite interesting um, to see that in a matter of a couple trims yep. that it can be it, it can in dramatic case, changes dramatic changes yeah, yeah, dramatic yeah, changes absolutely um how important is it like so we're, we're going to talk about environment a little bit we're in florida mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um we have a lot of sand yeah, yeah um but we came from up north you know where there's clay and there's lo lots of rocks and things like that so mm -hmm. uh, sometimes i go oh i hear people go well, I can't ride my horse, you know, because there's a lot of rocks and mm -hmm. it's a rough terrain. What is your, like, how would you respond to that? You know, um, it, these are the kind of things we, we get a lot of uh, questions on. Um, it's, it's understanding that you're going to have a foot for the environment you're in. And if you want to uh, exceed that environment, for instance, if you, you know, our horses, like you said, are on sand and on pasture. If I want to take my horses and I want to go ride, you know, uh, on, on the trails here in Florida, a lot of them are, are rocky. I mean, you've got a lot of limestone and you've yeah. got, you know, a lot of problems. Well, you have to understand, looking at the health, and we, we've developed what's called a spectrum of usability. It, it looks at all these various structures in the horse's foot and rates them on how much force or how much can I actually do with that foot based on the health of that given structure? So if I look at my horse's foot and, and I learn what a healthy sole is, and I look at the sole and it's low on the spectrum, well, I know that I'm gonna to need to use boots if I'm gonna exceed the ability. I'm gonna to have to put boots on. It's not all about barefoot. It's, not, it's understanding that you're gonna develop a, a foot for the environment that you create for that horse. Correct. Okay, so, and it's, a, it's the same with our race horses. You know, we, we work on a lot of race horses. Um, race horses, people think, you know, race horses are in a bad environment, uh, you know, because they're on the racetrack. That's actually one of the most forgiving environments that you could possibly have for a horse, okay? So, uh, the horses that are in the worst environments are your horses that are kept out in the pasture and you bring them in once a week and you want to go out and ride on them and you, you change their environment and the foot is just not developed for it. Not so, you, you know, that's what you have to do. So, so, so for us, because a lot of people we have are recreational horse mm -hmm. owners and sometimes they, and they, their schedule doesn't allow or their environment like up north where it's winter, and, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like super messy. Um, what do you recommend? Like if they're a recreational trail rider, um, they like to go out once a week, but like say right now, can't yeah. do that like what do you recommend that they would do you know we um over the last 20 years we've developed a lot of different products you know that yeah. you know we've developed our cevetrasol line for treating infections and that kind of thing yeah. um but we also have that perfect hoofwear okay yeah. so um and that is actually a product for rehabilitation okay? okay um so it's a it's a polyester wrap and i don't want to get into a you know, yeah. I'm not yeah, that, sales whole, pitch. It's that's all a different thing. Topic. <laughs> um, but what we're doing is actually creating an environment where the foot will develop more rapidly. And so, if you understand what stimulus is required, and this is where, um, you know, in conventional practice, the term stimulus really hasn't been used. We started using it 20 years ago, but it's still now. Uh, you know, it's not a common buzzword. Right. You, know, right. you, know, um, you know, you have to understand what is the stimulus responsible for uh, the development of health in your horse's foot. So each one of the structures in that horse's foot requires a different type of stimulus. So if you're looking to trail ride, you want to have a substantial foot. I mean, right. you want to have a thick enough sole, you want to have a good enough frog, uh, you want to make sure that the internal structures are healthy. And that the only way to do that is by exercise. That's how you create stimulus. So even if you, you want to ride on the weekend, if you're not going to exercise your horse during the week and you're not going to put the time in to develop those structures, you can't ask that horse to do something 
you know, above and beyond whatever that spectrum rating is for that foot. Right. So that's when you would turn to things like a boot. Okay. Right. And so if you want to go riding on the weekend, you put a set of boots on. That's fine. That's but don't think of that as rehabilitation. Don't think of that as, uh, you know, I'm going to be improving the health of my horse's foot just because I put boots on. And we get that all the time. You know, people said, you know, my horse has been barefoot for two years. Um, but he still he still can't go out on trails. I said, well, what did you do for rehabilitation? What are you doing to improve the health of that horse's foot? You know, um, you know, Robin, uh, you know, Robin, my my partner uh, and my wife uh, at the institute always says it. You know, it's been two years. You've had two years to grow an entire hoof. Right. What is it? What is you're doing wrong, or what's missing that you can grow a hoof in two years and still not have the structures that you want? Right. So you got to look at it and say, what's going on? You know, um, and uh, it comes down to developing a good exercise program so you get the right stimulus. Uh, balance is very important. You know, uh, making sure that you're always in balance. And hydration, that's another thing we always talk about, you know, uh, horses, hydrating our horses, because too many people uh, don't take that into consideration. They take into diet, they take into supplements, they take in all these other things, but they're not looking at the hydration on a horse. Right. It's really important. It's Super really important. important. Yeah, yeah it, it's interesting that you talk about the stimulus and the rehabilitation of the foot, because mm -hmm. one of our horses, um, Saddlebred, she has had notoriously flat feet. She mm -hmm. came to us that way. Brian's been working on her mm -hmm. and um, we, you know, she had an ill, it's not an injury, it's not an illness, but she had a medical condition that she could not be exercised for two and a half years. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like Brian was just like pulling his hair out going, why, yeah. you know, like what? And we got the medical condition resolved and she's back into work three to four days a week. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden we're like, Your foot's coming back. you know, like we're getting <laughs> concavity. Like yeah. we are just having a party in the yeah. barn because yeah. we're, you know, because, and, um, and so I love that you brought that up because I think a lot of people forget that. And I don't know that it has to be a long time frame. Like, no, no, you know, no. What? And, you know, 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, half hour a day. I mean, ideally half an hour to 45 minutes a day would be ideal. But what is a, a subject that's way beyond this, I'm sure. But uh, we need to start thinking about, you know, people talk about circulation. Mm -hmm. uh, I go beyond circulation. We talk about lymphatic function. Yeah. Okay. So in a horse's foot. Um, you know, circulation is is a hundred percent biomechanical once that foot hits the ground. Okay, so that's why the exercise comes in. You have to you have to have it for the circulation. But more importantly, is um, lymphatic function, getting all those toxins out of the foot, getting all of, all of you know all of the um, you know toxins, virus, bacteria, all of it out of what we call the interstitium, the tissue that's responsible for the growth. Right. That has to be evacuated, and that can only be done with exercise. Correct. Okay, it's it's a hundred percent biomechanical. Correct. Okay. Any so, type of lymphatic drainage. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. It's biomechanical, and the horse in particular. I mean, yeah. I, we understand now that you know if that foot is not distorting, and I don't want people to get confused. I'm not saying distorted. Right. I'm talking distortion is a verb, and right. it's the foot has to be able to flex and move correctly Correct. for that to happen. Correct. And so, if your horse is not exercising, you can't expect to treat thrush. You can't expect to treat thin soles. You can't expect these things to resolve themselves unless you, you know, provide the correct stimulus, which is through exercise. Through exercise. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Through exercise. Uh, so. and, and putting them out to pasture doesn't always. No, no, not, no. Not, and I it's, mean, you're, mine are when you're rehabilitating. Past, you yeah, know, they're on exactly. 20 acres and she's yeah. active, but not, yeah. No. You know, not the same as when we're doing dressage training. Yeah, yeah. And you, you think about it yourself. If you know, if your right foot is sore, right. You know, you can go for a walk, but you're not going to be using it the way you should be using Correct. it. And that's the same with a horse. I mean, if a horse is, is sore on his front feet, he's not going to be using it the same way. Correct. You know. Um, yeah. So I think these are things that people have to to look at. Right. You know. And so, exactly. Um, when it, it comes to the environment. A lot of people have herds, you know, they, they, they get into this with, you know, natural environment when they want to have the herd and they want to have, you know, companionship. Uh, that's all well and good, but 
most of the horses that we find that have problem feet yep. are low in the pecking order. Oh, interesting. Okay, because they're the ones that don't get to the water enough, or they're the ones that get chased away from the hay all the time, or they're, they're always stressed. Because stress is one of the biggest you know, contributors to problems in the foot, right. the stress. So, you know, when they're low on the pecking order, you know, we've got one, we've got an old Pasifino that he's low on the pecking order. He'll go out in the pasture and he'll stand in the corner away from everybody because he's always pushed around by our mare. So he's the one that's going to have the hydration problems. He's the one that's going to have the foot problems. So, and that's, people have to understand if they've got horses that are not active and they're low on the pecking order, you got to kind of, you know, sort of monitor it, just monitor it, sure. monitor the fluid intakes, water intake. You know, um, in Florida, we have a big problem because we have these water tanks and, and you know, automatic waterers. Correct. And that can be a, a major problem when you have a horse that has foot problems because you want to know how much they're taking in. Correct. How much water are they drinking? Correct. So, you know, I always recommend that those horses, you know, uh, be offered at least five gallons in the morning, five in the afternoon, five at night. So that we know how much they're drinking. Correct. You know, when I was a trainer, that's we never put a horse away until he finished a five gallon bucket of water. Wow. I mean, it's just, you know, wow. you never, you and never it, did. And so. it's true because we, we have two herds mm -hmm. and, um, and we've been very diligent about like make like monitoring them and making sure yep. that the dynamics are right in between the herds. And, you know, we had to do a bit of adjusting and swap two geldings out. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, we watch them and, you know, we do have automatic waters and they go yep. up and it's, and like you said, if it's the last horse in the line yeah. and the rest of the herds taken off, yeah. that horse doesn't, yeah. they, it, don't, it, they don't drink. And it's, so. it's, it's actually very critical because we're talking, you know, 10 to 20% change in, in, uh, in hydration. Uh, if you're feeding supplements, you're feeding electrolytes, you're feeding, and a lot of people, you know, they'll feed electrolytes when they shouldn't be feeding electrolytes and they're feeding supplements when they really don't need to feed supplements. But if they have a change in hydration, even 20%, so you figure a horse is what, 15 gallons a day in right. something that you want on average. So it's just a matter of, you know, you know, three gallons of water. Right. Is, is they can become dehydrated if they're not getting that that amount of water. So it's something that we're uh, at our farm. We're we're very diligent in making sure our water is always clean, and, and we've always got you know uh, buckets full, and full. you know Correct. making sure that you know yeah, um, yeah it's really important to, to hoof care uh, yeah. this hydration more so than supplementation. Most horses are getting good food. I mean, most horses uh, you know are are getting what they need. Correct. You know, it's it's very few horses. Most horses are over supplemented. That's the problem that Correct. I'm seeing is that Correct. they're over supplemented. Yeah, um, and that yeah. is that is a problem. Like, yeah. it hasn't really been addressed. Yeah. But it, over supplementation for the feed. Is, it's a it's a oh. major problem. Yeah. It, it really is. Yes. Yeah. Um, what is the biggest takeaway that my viewers um, can derive from? you regarding <laughs> and i know that's a loaded subject yeah, right um, uh, but what what's the biggest takeaway that they can um you know um you know i i tend to want i'm kind of picturing in my head your audience uh, and you know my audience, uh, our our clientele are, are shoeless. The majority of them are shoeless. Okay, or they're people coming to us that are shod that want to go shoeless for one reason or another. You know, they, 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 you know the natural theme always comes up. You know, they never wore shoes before, so we want to go barefoot. But we have a lot of performance people coming to us. You know, that are that are shod that that want to go shoeless because they're getting better performance. So, the the, the biggest takeaway from this is understand what true foot function is okay and when, yes. you, when you're talking about the horse's hoof you have to understand that the entire back half of that foot is what we call dynamic tissue cartilage digital cushioning cartilage that is supposed to be able to move it's supposed to be able to 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 do its job and you know it's been centuries that we've been shoeing horses that doesn't mean it's right Okay, and a rigid shoe is detrimental to a horse's foot. I don't care. I don't care if it's for therapeutic reason, remedial shoeing. It doesn't matter. A rigid shoe eliminates function of the caudal foot, the back half of the foot. And so, if you're dealing with anything like thrush, or you're dealing with thin soles, or you're dealing with navicular syndrome, or anything like that, um, you have to look at 
true foot function and realize that what we've been accepting as normal in the industry is not normal. It's just, it's just not, it's, it's not in, in my life. It's not acceptable anymore. I mean, I, you know, I, I, whenever I get a call on these problem feet, um, I have to educate the owner on what's going on in that foot. So that's, that's the biggest takeaway is learn that the foot is a dynamic structure. It's not simply a hoof at the end of the limb, that there's a lot of, a lot of structures there that have to have the correct stimulus and you really need to educate yourself. And it's not, it's not difficult. I mean, it's, it's not complicated. Okay. Right. Uh, it's, it's really not complicated. Yeah. So. Correct. And mm -hmm. with that, so I know your your program, you have several programs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know, well, Brian, you know, Brian's been through, yep. and, yeah. um, and you have some other, you, so give me a little bit of an overview of mm -hmm. what the programs you offer. Yeah, we've, we've got quite a bit coming up in 2023, actually. We already have in place, uh, it's called Managing the Barefoot Horse for the Horse Owner, which is an online program. Um, and we also have our level one, which is for people that uh, are interested in a career change and they want to become an applied equine podiatrist and they want to, you know, and uh, as you were saying, you know, Brian, we were having a discussion earlier, Brian is a work because there's just so many horses that need help and we've got, you know, we've got a lot of clients here, but we need more people. So we have that, okay, so that's our diploma program. And we have our advanced program. So once you've finished the level one, we have our advanced program. But in 2023, we're also gonna be doing um, 30 days to balance, which, oh, nice. is, uh, which is going to be um, daily, uh, daily videos. It's probably gonna be 20 or 30 minutes a day um, for 30 days explaining to people what balance is, what the structures are, what applied equine podiatry is. So that's coming up. Um, and we've got a couple of certification programs uh, coming up on pathologies on our okay. you know, on my book that I wrote on you yep. know, laminitis and founder and equine digital osteoarthritis. So we're going to be doing a certification program for that uh, where farriers or anybody else can come and they can get a certificate. You know, there'll be exams and so forth. So we've got a lot going on um, and we hope to be doing a podcast as well. So right. we'll have you on our podcast. So, <laughs> so we're, we're kind of doing that kind of stuff. Awesome, so, awesome. Yeah. And so, if people are interested in your work and mm -hmm. and what and your um, practitioner's work, where is the best place for them to start? Um, they, if they're interested in becoming a. a, a an applied equine podiatrist, the level one online, they can take that. They don't have to take any courses, but you know, then they'll start taking their practical courses. You know, hopefully once they get, you know, they get their teeth into it. Right. Uh, horse owners that want to know how to implement applied equine podiatry into their everyday routine, the, the barefoot management course is an excellent place to start. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I highly, I highly recommend that you guys. It's one of those things, um, that if you own horses, if you're into horses, mm -hmm. like they say, no hoof, no horse. And mm -hmm. that really is true if you've ever encountered yeah. a horse that's had any hoof problems or feet problems. We, we call them feet, feet problems. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, we, you know, uh, I just want to, just one more thing I just yeah. want to mention. We do have our five day courses, uh, which we hold all over the world, but we have right. one and coming. And those up. are in person. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, those, I teach the five day courses. And uh, we actually have one coming up in February uh, that's going to be here in Ocala. Uh, it's shaping up to be a pretty nice course. Uh, and nice. people, you know, it's, it's for horse owners. It's not for people that just, you know, want to go on to become a, uh, an equine podiatrist or applied equine podiatrist. It's for horse owners as well. And, um, you know, we get, we go through over the basics and then we do the dissection, as you mentioned, yeah. and we get hands on and we, you know, get, learn how to get on the horses and how to look at the feet. And so that's a, a good resource for people that want to work on their own horses or if they, you know, uh, really want to get into it. Um, I can't say enough about those courses. I mean, yeah. Yeah. They're yeah, they're they're it's amazing. The hands on one is mm -hmm. really, really great for um like you said, even if you're just a horse owner yep. and you have no intention mm -hmm. of trimming your horse's feet, to be able to be educated at least a little like yeah. and let let me tell you guys, like even if you just take one of Casey's <laughs> classes, 
be ready. Um, it's a lot of information. Um, yeah. He's absolutely brilliant at this. Yeah. Um, um, but what you are going to learn is it will change the way that you look at the horse's foot forever. Yeah, and you know, the more educated, curse. yeah, it, it, <laughs> it, can, can be it can be a curse because we don't want yeah. you going, hey, <laughs> um, that's a little bit of a balance. But, um, you know, proceed with caution, but, you know, become educated. Yeah, and absolutely. You might find that, you know, kind of like Brian, like he originally <laughs> took the class because of our business and because of what we do with red light work. Yep. And he, with that engineering brain he's got, you know, and it's all angles and planes, and he looked at it and he went, hey, this is really cool, and just sort of fell in love with it. And it's sort of like, you know, his second or third career. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we, we 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 do use the red lights quite a bit in level two. We you know we we recommend them and. Uh, yeah. And now you guys, I mean, you guys travel worldwide. You have classes over in Europe. Yeah, well. yeah, we're busier over in Europe. Uh, actually, uh, our courses in Europe usually months in advance are full, and nice. we've got one coming up in March in France, and I think we've got over twenty students already wow. registered and. Uh, yeah, it's really popular. Awesome. Yeah. So what is your website? Yeah, it's um, appliedequinepodiatry.org. Okay. Okay. And so. is there, would, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? Is it? Uh, you can, there's a contact form right there. Uh, you okay. can, you can contact us right through the website. Uh, we also have our Facebook group, which is Applied Equine Podiatry, if you go on Facebook. Awesome. Um, and um, we can give you, um, I'm getting some, 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 coaching. some coaching here. So, <laughs> um, so applied uh, you can, you can email uh, directly. Um, you can email info at equinepodiatry.com, which will get right through to the office. Awesome. Okay. Excellent. And mm -hmm. if you guys can't figure out how to get a hold of him, um, we'll have this in our email and we'll also have mm -hmm. the contact information on, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, it, the information will be below. So mm -hmm. check that out. And if you still can't find what you're looking for, reach out to our office. And of course, we're able to get you connected up to these amazing cool. people. So thank you I so much it. for thank being so on much. today. We appreciate it. It was excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching this edition of Photonic Health Presents Health Made Simple. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications for all new Photonic Health videos.